Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about whether or not there is a stealing culture in magic. And to do this, I had to do some research on, I'm focusing on Walmart first at the retail space because I feel like in our community, there are different levels of stealing. So when you steal from another magic player, that's felt at the highest level. People know that that's no good. Uh, if you steal from your local game store, that's also looked down upon. But in the internet culture and the, and I'll show you examples of pretty brazen people asking for advice how to steal. Uh, and they have these, um, what's it called? Discord channels. And they talk about what is, how's the best way to steal from Walmart or retailers. Here's my personal feelings before I get into some of the storytelling. If someone's going to steal, they will continue to steal. They will steal magic cards. They will steal laptops. They will steal your iPhone. They will steal everything. I know from experience as an employer, we give a lot of people opportunities that they otherwise wouldn't. Um, people with no education, with uh, situations that are very, you know, sketchy at best. I would say sketchy at best. But one person that I won't hire is someone who has a record of stealing because we have important client files on our laptops. So it's not the loss of the laptop that concerns me. It's the loss of the passwords. It's the loss of the data. It's loss of all the information that is stored on that laptop. And that is very, very uh, disconcerting when someone has a record of that. Uh, I always think of the old saying, um, I forget, I don't know where it originally came from, but uh, the story is a, a husband and wife, they own a grocery store. They had an employee, a really nice old lady, and one day they caught her stealing. And the husband says, we should just forgive her because she's been working here for 20 years. The wife said, no, very adamant about firing the person because she says, this is the first time you caught her. It does not mean it's the first time she stole from you. That's my opinion about cheating. That is my opinion about stealing. If you are caught cheating, it is not likely this is the first time you cheated, even on a percentage, right? Maybe you're very unlucky, Alex Pacini, right? Um, but stealing is the same thing. These are professional people who steal. So let's say that you invite them to your home, you invite them to your local game store. They can't help themselves. Like, I wanted to create... And I shot this video again, but probably I'm going to need to wait until March to hire a... So I am always interested in hiring talent because I do. I still believe that if someone else did this channel, it would just be much better done. It would be happier. Um, it, unfortunately, the recent one didn't work out, but there's many, many reasons that I'm not going to go in detail about it, uh, including... There's just so many reasons that the fit was not there. This is a guy who steals from Walmart. And this is a guy who gets caught stealing from Walmart. He's trying to steal $500 of cards. So when I'm reading these, uh, and you can Google, of course you can Google anything today. You can figure out that, wait a second, these dudes are trying to steal $500, $600, $100 of magic product. That is a lot of magic product. And they always have a accomplice. So if I asked, if I were to figure out a plan, if you forced me to figure out a plan how to take stuff from Walmart, I would A, not take magic cards because I, the expected value is very low. And B, I wouldn't think that I would need an accomplice. But in every single of these cases, there is a accomplice and there's just the girlfriend uh, waiting in the car. And once the guy gets caught, he calls the girlfriend 18 times, right? And pretty much saying, hey, I've been caught. Yeah. I got caught stealing. All right, help help me out. And girlfriend doesn't pick up because at that point it's very bad. Probably drives away, right? So this is the face of MTG crime. And you might feel like, oh, well, he only is stealing from Walmart. Why should anyone care? It's just Walmart. The issue here is if he's going to steal from Walmart and get caught, He's probably stealing from your local game store. He's probably stealing from players. We all know that dude who looks at your trade binder when you're playing or who asks you to look at your trade binder while you're playing 
And if you stack multiple cards, like sometimes I put like the same card behind each other, which you shouldn't do. You definitely shouldn't do because it's harder to track lost that way. So that's a tip for you guys who trade still. What's going to happen is the guy's going to take all your multiples. Guaranteed. Absolutely guaranteed. And here's the funny part about this whole, uh, and when I'm doing more and more research about it, it gets uh, scarier and scarier because these are criminals, these are perpetual, uh, these are people who steal, uh, and they steal from Walmarts all over. They drive from Walmart to Walmart, stealing product from pro. And I, I don't get it. I, I can understand sometimes that you people have very difficult lives and maybe they need food or diapers, baby formula, or you know something that to survive off. But magic cards are so non-essential to life. They are the definition of a luxury. And to steal something like a magic card is just, uh, just uh, doesn't make any sense to me. Like I feel like, the, the, uh, again, I'll get to this, like the expected value. So I have a chart where I calculate the expected value of stealing magic cards. And it's always way negative. It's so negative. You get caught, you're never gonna get hired by an employer like me. Like I, you stealing is one of the things I can forgive or not, I don't, they don't need my forgiveness, okay? I'll put that out there. But I can rationalize some certain crimes where a background check comes back, I'm like, all right, maybe I should talk to him or her before, before hiring this person and talk about it. Um, and that's happened uh, before. There's other crimes that I just can't imagine hiring a person, uh, one of that being you know, sexual offenders. Uh, if someone is put in a position of power, like a school teacher, like David Park, and then he uses that position of power to uh, force two of his students to ha engage in relationships, uh, that is not someone you ever want to hire, in my opinion. And that's my personal opinion. I know a lot of you guys are like, oh, I have friends and families who are sexual offenders, and I feel like they should be treated equally. They did their time. I get that. I totally get it. But for me... You know, I, we have clients who work with children. We have clients who are hospitals, uh, ERs, dentists. We have clients who sell clothing, some of it to children. I just can't imagine it. And from an HR perspective, if we have, you know, female employees, do you want to put them in a position where uh, after a company party, this guy who is has a shady background, and again, they want to know what the background was, but you would know as the employer, as the person who ran the background check that, whoa, uh, okay, stay away, okay, goodbye. Goodbye, David Park. <laughs> I'll see you next week. No, <laughs> no. And now like, the same thing with stealing. If someone has been caught for stealing and they perpetually steal stuff and they have a criminal background, so that means, that's not the first time they stole. It's the first, second time they've been caught. And even if they're just stealing magic cards and now you have a magic store, would you employ this person who has gone to jail for stealing magic cards at your place, at your magic store? No, because you would be giving him candy. It would be like putting a, a teenager in a, what, what do teenagers like to destroy? What does Jake Paul, Logan Paul like to destroy? Uh, it is like putting a, a, a little kid in a candy store and telling them to run it. That candy store is going to burn down. There won't be any candy left. So those are my personal opinions. I know a lot of people have different opinions and they might be like, oh, you did your time. And for the most part, I agree with that, but that doesn't mean I want to hire you. So the loss of job prospects, the loss of possible future employment, and just the fact that this guy's, you know, it's the internet. Your face is going to be plastered on some body, some loser's channel like MTG Line, right? Forever. And now everyone's looking at your face, and when they see you at the local game store, they're like, oh, this guy's a douchebag. He stole $500. I better not trade with him. And I know you guys know who I'm talking about because every local game store I've had has that one shady dude, that one shady douchebag. And at Groovy Geckos, it was this like, goth kid and he really like st he stole like e literally he stole everything 
Uh, and every, everything that was not like nailed down, he would steal. And because he's not a regular. So the good thing about magic communities is if you have a regular person, they're not likely to steal from you because then you would see them next week, right? The people who are likely to steal are people you have no idea who they are. They just came in for pre-release. They just came in for FNM. They don't know anyone. Now they want to look at your trade binder while you're playing Magic. There is a reason for that because you're distracted and now all your cards are gone. <laughs> I think it's a it's a problem in our community and I uh, the only way to fix it is to shame these people, I think. Anyway, bye guys.